good morning, or I should say, since we're bi-coastal here, good afternoon to you guys. Um, and for everybody, uh, we, this is the Scale Venture Partners team uh, meeting with the LightPoint team. And I'm Kate Mitchell. I'm a venture, uh, venture investor in California. Uh, we're enterprise investors, uh, enterprise software investors. We're very interested in having this meeting with, uh, with the LightPoint team uh, because, of our, because of our particular focus. So with that, the rest of us will introduce ourselves. We'll get into more detail. And I'm Sharon Weinbar. I'm also a partner here at Scale Venture Partners. Hi, Kate and Sharon. I'm Zuli Gonzalez. I'm the co-founder and chief operating officer of LightPoint Security. Hi, I'm Bo Adkins. I'm the CEO of LightPoint Security. And just a quick overview of what we do. Uh, we protect businesses from web-based malware, and web-based malware is malicious software delivered through web browsers. Um, we do that by allowing, the, or we isolate the employees' browsing sessions within a virtual machine so that none of the web content that they're looking at ever even touches their computers. That's great. Well, and uh, both as an investor and as, as users of technology, with all the existing uh, technology we have now, both at the perimeter and at the endpoints, it's a pain that we're still experiencing. So uh, it, it's, a, it's a problem that our IT group uh, was interested in seeing when we started looking at you. So one of the, the what we're going to try to do over the course of, of these sessions is uh, I understand what you guys are doing, uh, try to provide you as much help as possible because we're really excited that you're in the Wall Street Journal Startup of the Year uh, contest. So with that, I'll tell you a few seconds more. We like, uh, as investors, we like enterprise software. We've had three investments in the sector, Zone Lab, ScanSafe, and Lumention, which as you guys know, since you operate in the, in, in the, in the business, um, uh, have some great solutions, but not nothing is getting everything. And your backgrounds, both as entrepreneurs, but before that in the defense industry, certainly gets you well prepared. Um, I know that one of the things that we're going to try to talk about are two topics we'll try to cover in the short time we have. One is going to be to talk to you a little bit about your fundraising plans. And secondly, we'll try to talk a little bit about kind of where you are in your whole product evolution and give you some feedback. Okay. Sounds good. And so maybe kind of your yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about stage and some other things like that. Yeah. Right. It might. Yes. Yeah, so, so we're focused on in revenue companies that are scaling. So when you've when companies have achieved the classic product market fit and a channel to market, that's the part where Scale Venture Partners likes to invest. So that when we know we're you, the companies are going to use the capital that we provide to expand their sales and marketing and really push up the top line of the business. So maybe it would be helpful for, um, for all of us, for you guys to talk a little bit about where you think you are with respect to actually achieving the minimal viable product and product market fit and kind of what, you know, what's your initial target market for the LightPoint solution and kind of, and how you, and how you think that this addresses their needs. And I'd say, and I'll add to that. Your target market, where you're aiming. The other thing is, give us a quick background of your stage, because I think that's nice background of kind of where you are in your life cycle. Okay, so we're um, we're definitely early stage. We have an MVP of our product. It's got the the core functionality. Uh, it provides 100% security in terms of what we want to accomplish. Um, what we're doing now is working on building in some uh, browser features that make it even. Uh, easier for uh, the end user to use. Um, so that's kind of the stage we're at. We're um, looking at, uh, since we're in the security industry, security industry is very rapidly moving, so the, the tech industry in general, and we've been basically bootstrapping the company since we started up until this point. Um, so that's, that's been several years actually. And we've been happy with that. We've um, grown slowly, but we're at a point now where we feel like we're, we're ready to start moving faster and um, getting more customers and building out the product even more. Um, and that's kind of where we're at. So we're, we're looking at um, possibly raising some, some angel funding in the next few months, um, possibly getting a, a loan, which is one of the things we wanted to, to talk to you about and touch on. Um, and, and once we have that capital, use it to hire a developer specifically. That'd be the first thing we would do is hire a developer to help um, build out the feature set as well as um, put some money towards marketing and sales. 
Well, why don't we talk first about your capital needs? Because you, there might be some advice you guys can use. And by the way, if you guys hadn't mentioned, you should talk about where you're located. And I think you're in an interesting incubator uh, that is focused in your sector. Maybe briefly talk about that. But and that relates to the. It looks like potentially some early stage, some seed funding you're you're looking for that might be available that could help you. We can give you some feedback about that. Okay. Yeah, we're, um, we're located just outside of Baltimore, Maryland at a uh, cyber incubator at the UMBC campus. Um, we've been here since uh, November and things have started moving more rapidly for us since we've been in here. Um, there's also a thing we want to talk to you about, a loan program that we're considering applying for. Um, and I'll give you a quick rundown of the terms so maybe you can uh, give us some quick feedback. It's up to $250,000. You don't pay it back unless you have a trigger event. A trigger event would be uh, like investment or a buyout in an amount at least four times of what you borrow. Um, at that point, you'd pay back a, a one-time 10% uh, fee on it, and then you have three to five years to pay back the, the capital. Oh, okay. Oh, that's that's a nice long-term. Yeah, yeah. Those yeah. are really that was yeah. a well thought out yeah, program. That's, yeah, that's attractive terms because the if you raise a seed round of say a million or two million dollars, then you're only paying back the 25%, I'm sorry, $25,000, not that, you know, so you're not taking money from one investor and using it to pay back another investor immediately, you're just, you're paying that fee. And then right. it's, it's more like permanent capital that's sitting on your balance sheet. So that sounds attractive. Right. Yeah. Right. So when you're thinking about that, and by the way, always important, and I love the fact that you guys started with the use of capital, that you've thought that through is probably your first important step because that'll tell you whether, and, I, and by the way, I think the two things you're using it for, more engineering, we'll talk about the product in a minute, and, um, and then sales and marketing is perfect use given where you are right now. So you have good use for it. Um, so you certainly could put that 250 to, you know, continue to build out both the product but build out your presence. That's a good use for it. So you kind of want to balance that risk and reward. It seems to be there. Um, so what are you thinking you had in mind? You mentioned, Bo, that after the loan, you might go out for angel capital. You don't even have to hit this trigger if you don't raise a million dollars. What are you thinking you in your rough plans, which are always subject to change, of course, but what's your idea about what you might want to later get from angel investors? Uh, we were thinking uh, 18 months to 24 months after we get, if we got that loan, uh, doing a raise in the order of a million, uh, a million to okay. at, that, at that time. Wow, that's great. Yeah, I mean, the I think one of the challenges you might face and you might think about raising capital earlier is, from our perspective, servicing the enterprise, which I think is your target market. Yep. There's function, there's feature functionality of the solution, but then there's there are the classic enterprise features of um, the ability to deploy the software, manage the software, the reliability, reporting, all those things that are not the security functions, but are the function, software functions that allow end you enterprises to adopt it and manage it. Um, and so they're kind of jacks to open in the space, and you have to you have to build those features in, even though they're not really moving the security aspect down the playing field. Yeah. yeah and and you know, and this is probably the end of our first session. I'm looking forward to a lot more of these because we have some fun questions to talk, dive into about product. But the question you had then was, does it make sense to take this loan? Let's answer that question. I think the answer is absolutely yes. It's well designed. Um, you don't have to take, when, when you raise, let's say a million, 250 of it or two, 275 of it doesn't go back to the state of Maryland day one. So you've got to convince something, somebody that only three quarters of the money is used to continue to build. It's really well structured to encourage future lending. So compliments to the state of Maryland for that. So I think you should take it. I don't think that would be negative for an angel or certainly if you were looking for venture capital. I think Karen's advice to you is a good one. I think you guys, when we did our research, um, we didn't see any obvious competitors that you have. Um, you know, you may have a roadmap, and I know what you do is technically challenge that may take you 18 months, you may want to consider taking capital early. Maybe it's a half a million in nine months. Um, and, and we'll talk later about what you see your, your milestones to be and how you think about that. But if you've got something that's taking off, continued technical development and continued sales and marketing, 18 months from now, you'd hate to find 
somebody to have hit upon what great idea we think you've hit upon. We'd love to see that in our enterprise um, as a solution. Um, so, and we have some ideas of what you could do with that development money to close that gap. Um, but it's close, and, and, and because there isn't something that we are using that solves this problem, you might want to do it faster. I think Sharon's point was the right one. So, yeah, that's, this is, that's this a great, that's a, yeah, thank you. That's a great point, and that's um, Sharon's point. Something we've run into actually as, as we're talking to customers is those enterprisey features that um, aren't core product. Um, and one of the things we've thought about doing is maybe since since we want to get some, some revenue in the door, targeting smaller sized companies that don't necessarily need those, those extra features, just so we get a little bit of revenue coming in, get some feedback, and then as the product matures, then we're in a position where we can really target that, that enterprise market. That's great. Well, this is time for us to wrap up, but I think now we have our second topic, which is what's your market entry strategy? And we would love to talk to you about that. We've had a lot of experience and have some thoughts. So we look forward great. to the next conversation. We'll go great. Thank you. And we'll go from there. Yes. Good luck. Take care. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, Kate so and Sharon. Thank you. See you later.